This video is proudly sponsored by Gamersgate. Download games anytime, anywhere. Visit Gamersgate.com. Welcome to Elder Geeks Elder Speak. Today is Tuesday, April 17th, 2012. My name is Randy Asenchok, owner and editor of ElderGeek.com. Uh, I took the day off a little bit yesterday uh, for some family reasons. However, hopefully the our favorite Skyrim mods as of the 16th video held you over at least until today. Today in the background you're going to be seeing some videos or uh, some gameplay from Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP, which was just ported over to the PC recently. It's a side-scrolling adventure retro nouveau kind of vector-based video game. I, I, I wouldn't call it a click fest, but but based on its screenshots and based on the movies and the videos and stuff for this game, it seems like a very interesting game, but it doesn't really say a lot about the game. So hopefully seeing some of this gameplay footage in the background will help some people out. So far, I'm really enjoying it. However, it's not, like I said, it's not a click fest. This is more of an early morning coffee slash late evening wine kind of drinking game. You know, it's, it's a slow paced, it's very relaxed, it's more about storytelling or minimalist storytelling and for those who will like it will probably love it but this probably isn't going to be a game for everyone but hopefully i'll be getting some more time within it uh in, in the next couple of days and and try to put together a video review for you in one shape or another my allergies are actually killing me today and hopefully i'll power through this and then you know just either edit out all of my sneezing and, and sniffling and everything like that and hopefully you won't be hearing too much too much of my suffering, but I'm sure my voice is going to sound a little bit different. In the news today, CBS Interactive, or I, I should say Twitch TV actually announced today that CBS Interactive purchased them. Twitch is now a part of CBS. We we got the press release this morning, and, and here I'll just read a little bit of the, the snippets for it, and I'll try to show it on screen here as well. It says, as you may have already seen, CBS Interactive today announced an exclusive partnership with Twitch TV as well as eSports powerhouses MLG and NASL. We're very excited about the announcement for many reasons, but what does it mean for our Twitch TV broadcasters? And by the way, ElderGeek.com is a Twitch TV broadcaster. Our Twitch TV channel is twitchtv.com slash eldergeek.com, similar to our YouTube channel uh, and Facebook channel uh, URLs. Partnering with CBS Interactive, as many of you know well through their work at GameSpot, is simple. CBS will exclusively be selling advertising, promotions, and sponsorships for our community. This will result in a stronger, more resilient Twitch TV, where we'll be able to spend more time on concentrating on broadcasting features and technology, and less time on handling the advertising legwork. Now, of course, that comes as a little bit of mixed news, depending on your point of view about CBS. In terms of Twitch TV, yes, I fully believe that this is going to make Twitch TV a more viable uh, and more stable streaming option for a lot of streamers out there. I think that this definitely secures Twitch's place in the streaming world for years to come. I mean, up until now, they were they were growing very quickly, but you know, I, I, I was a little bit worried about how they were going to be able to stay afloat if certain congressional acts were to go through, or even if even if any company out there just decided to, to raise hell about people streaming game XYZ or anything like that, or, or uh, any, any group out there that was like, hey, Streamer Z is streaming video games, but they're playing my music in the background while they're playing it. I, I could see that being a big issue for Twitch TV in the future, but with them being backed by CBS, I think that they're going to have a stronger legal foot to stand on, which is good for them. In terms of advertising, I hope this does not result in more ads being seen on Twitch TV because as it is, I think there are quite a bit that you have to hit, you know, you have to sit through unless you're using some type of web blocker or ad blocker. Now, of course, this is big news for anybody who follows MLG and NASL, and uh, I'm personally not one of them. I don't follow Major League Gaming, and I probably never will. To me, that sounds incredibly boring. If if I'm going to be watching a video game, I would like to at least have clever commentary kind of along with it if, if somebody was playing a video game that I've never seen before, and I, and I would like to watch that. But if, if, in terms of like watching a competitive match of you know a bunch of people playing a first-person shooter or a real-time strategy game, that has no interest for me at all, like zero. And um, the reason being, gaming for me is a more personal experience. And I know that sounds kind of odd because I, I broadcast my, my video reviews and, and during the show you actually see me playing video games. But for the most part when I'm playing the games it's a it's a more personal experience. I, it's almost like reading a book and it's not so much like 
playing basketball or something like that. I'm not I'm not doing it to have other people watch me, you know, play against somebody else. It's I'm enjoying it. I'm in the moment, and hopefully my experiences can benefit other people. But I don't know. To each their own kind of thing, you know. I, but that I guess is big news for everybody else. I guess that means that secures MLG's future and NASL's future by having backing like CBS Interactive. So good on them, I guess. In other news, the Diablo 3 beta is going to be drawing to a close on Tuesday, May 1st, which is two weeks from today. So get your demon slaying out of your system right now as, as quickly as you can. You have two weeks to do it. But uh, they're actually going to be closing off the, the beta access until the game actually launches on May 15th. So you have two weeks from now until your beta characters are going to be completely deleted. However, you can use the, that other two week period from May 1st to May 15th to possibly go back and play through Diablos 1 and 2 again and uh, and kind of get yourself back up to speed with Diablo 3 when it finally launches. So again, Diablo 3 beta closes on Tuesday, May 1st, so get all that, that click fest demon slaying uh, urges out of your system. For everyone out there who is excited about Dark Souls coming to PC, good news for you, the game might not be restricted to Games for Windows Live, which, again, that is huge news for everybody out there. Games for Windows Live is a little bit of a wonky system. In fact, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. It's not a little bit of a wonky system. It's a wonky system. And the reason why they're going to be using it, using Games for Windows Live is because that's the platform that they have the multiplayer set up right now for the Xbox 360, and it, it just makes sense for them to switch it over for the PC. However, for PC gamers, we all know that that's it's not a very user-friendly experience, and uh, it's not a very stable experience either. So, it, the the developers and the producers behind Dark Souls PC are listening to consumers about this issue, and they're working on hopefully. Um, another solution for it. It doesn't sound like they're going to be ditching Games for Windows Live. I'm wondering, however, if they're going to be trying to do it so that there will be like a Games for Windows Live edition and then a Steam edition or a Games for Windows Live edition and then a, a uh, I don't know, a, a, ga a good old games edition or, or a Gamers Gate edition, something along those lines. So I'm thinking that that we're going to be, in all likelihood, it's probably going to be Steam. I, I know that's only speculating at the moment, but but to be honest with you, it's the only other really well developer supported kind of system out there where it, it, it integrates matchmaking and audio and, you know, purchasing and downloading, which is pretty much everything that, that Games for Windows Live tries to do but kind of fails. So there you have it. That's actually good news for PC gamers everywhere and for people who want to have more high def uh, Dark Souls action. In console news, it seems as though that uh, Halo 4 is going to be releasing on November 6th, which is obviously a Tuesday, but in neat news, that's actually election day. So, Halo 4, you can you can tell your boss, hey, I'm not going to be coming in today because, man, those polls are just going to be crowded and, and I'm going to be crazy late to work anyway, so I might as well just take the day off. So go ahead and, and uh, prepare your day, you know, pick up your copy of Halo the night before, go vote first thing in the morning, and then play Halo the rest of the day. And enjoy yourself that day. But uh, in a little bit of other interesting news uh, surrounding Halo, uh, Halo 4, it's actually going to be, the soundtrack is actually going to be changed up. They're not going to be using the same composer. This time around, it's actually going to be uh, put together by Massive Attack producer Neil Davidge and uh, Dark Knight and Black Swan arrangers Mike Dunkley. So, those two together, I think, are just going to be creating a fantastic soundtrack. And to be honest with you, I'm more excited about the soundtrack than I am about Halo 4. I mean, I, I, I think that just that's just like a dynamic combination of, of two musical masterminds. And to actually come together on a game like Halo 4, I think that they're going to be producing something fantastic. So get excited about that. And in your final little bit of news today, everybody like us who is excited about the Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, it turns out that it's going to be even more than just your standard Enhanced Edition. It seems as though that they're actually going to be raising the level cap on the game, and there's even whispers about a new dungeon entirely within the game as well. So even if you've played Baldur's Gate before, even if you still play Baldur's Gate, and there are many of us out there that still do, it looks as though there's going to be even more reasons to be picking up Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. So 
absolutely that's the the best news of the day but it might not be the biggest news of the day but that's the best news of the day for me and and i think that's a kind of a good way for me to edge my way out as always if anybody has any questions or comments please feel free to send them to info at elder-geek.com or if you like if you have any topics that you want me to talk about on the show i promise someday this week i'm going to be doing a viewer mail day uh just been like i said been trying to play catch up a little bit uh as always follow us on facebook at facebook.com slash eldergeek.com on twitch tv slash jtv at twitch tv dot com slash eldergeek.com and of course head on over to our main site at elder-geek.com and i will talk to you all tomorrow